iPhone 13 on us for every customer. Current, new, everyone to show the love. Welcome back to The Pivot with Stephanie Humphrey. Black Lives Matter Plaza, White House in the background, a place where a lot of decisions are getting made right now about the future of this country, our money, defense, civil rights, justice, everything. A lot of uncertainty floating around all of the decisions that we make on a daily basis. And especially if you're looking to pivot, you might not be so sure about whether or not the choices you're making are the right ones for you at the time. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Uncertainty, imposter syndrome. Is this what I really should be doing? I have a little bit of uncertainty around this very show, if I can be honest 
honest with you. I wasn't sure I wanted to be so vulnerable, uh, but Roland said people need to know. And so I am here to help the people. We have Dr. Brandy Baldwin as our guest today. She is the CEO of Millennial Ventures and a leadership diversity, equity, inclusion expert. And she's gonna help us understand how to deal with that uncertainty when it comes up in our lives and some tips on how to fight imposter syndrome. Stay tuned. We are talking uncertainty, y'all. I mean, can we really, really do this? Thanks so much for checking out The Pivot with Stephanie Humphrey. I am here with Dr. Brandy Baldwin, a dear friend and the CEO of Millennial Ventures, uh, Inc. Is it Millennial Ventures, Inc.? Or Millennial, yes. Millennial Ventures, Inc. Yes. Um, an the author, a speaker, and an expert in leadership and diversity, equity, inclusion. Dr. Brandy, thanks so much for being here with us today. Thank you, Stephanie. Excited for our discussion. Yeah, let's get into it. So we are talking uncertainty. Those those moments where you ain't even sure. You kind of like, I don't know. I thought I had this all locked in, but now things are feeling a little, little iffy, little iffy. Yes. Um, I'm sure we have all had those moments. I would love to hear you talk about a few of those moments in your life. Absolutely. I think, you know, one of the things that I've learned and hindsight is always 2020, mm -hmm. but, you know, day in and day out, we all have this false sense of security. Technically, we, we don't really know what's going to happen tomorrow, the next day or the next week. But when we have this uh, realization for things like COVID or things like that are happening in the economy and when, when it hits us and it comes to our front door, a lot of times it shakes us and it makes us feel like we have less control, that things are more yes. uncertain. But at the end of the day, they were always uncertain. The, the difference is we typically had a plan in place. And so uh, for me, I think one of the things that I remember just disrupting my plan for myself was this idea, you know, I'm a millennial. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the millennial generation we were told that you go to school, you get good grades, you know, you're going to graduate, you're going to go to college, get a career, and, you know. Yeah, and, we but, all got sold that bill of goods. <laughs> right. We all got sold. And I'm like, I want a receipt because I had this <laughs> idea of what my life would be and that, that there was some certainty around if you do this and you do that, you're guaranteed success. Mm -hmm. And so for me, you know, almost 20 years ago now, you know, coming out of college and realizing that, okay, wait. We're, we're, um, you know, in recessions coming. Um, I'm actually have a lot of degrees, but I am not feeling, um, worthy. I'm not feeling really confident. The world is saying that I should be feeling successful, but inside I'm not. And mm -hmm. so it's one of those things, particularly, I think, with high achievers, like I'm a, I'm a recovering, um, overachiever and high achiever. And but are you recovering though? <laughs> look, I mean, for real, now, now, like, don't, now don't forget I know you. I'm like, are we recovering? Okay, you know what? Truth be told. Let's just say Stephanie you're in Humphrey, recovery. You know, here's the thing. I love that you pointed that out. I am high achieving with better motives. Before, I was high achieving because there was something that I was missing. Because mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I was worthy. Because I felt like the degrees and the accolades and the awards and the accomplishments would actually build up my identity. Now, mm -hmm. I'm actually able to strive and able to achieve as a result of having a cohesive and fully formed and authentic identity. So rather than me doing the thing to, to build up my identity, I had to get my identity tight. Now I'm able to do the things I always wanted to do. So it's the motive that's different, not the outcome. I love it. I love it. You just said a whole word right there. Let Listen, you got to already know who you are or all of that other extra stuff ain't going to make a bit of difference. It is not going to... Yeah. Um, change who you are on the inside if you haven't already done that inner work. And I think that's where a lot of the uncertainty can come from is when you don't have that, you're not grounded in, in a stable sense of self. You know, when you're, when you're like, 
when there's that inner turmoil that yep. manifests itself into, well, I don't know if this is going to work out because you don't know if you're good enough to make it work out. Well, I don't know if I'm going to get this gig or I don't know if this business is going to fail or not because you still don't know if the vision is, is solid. You know, yeah. is, is this pl was this plan even the plan I was supposed to have in the first place? You know, has my mindset been, been on the right things and, and focused on the right things? So, so all of that, uncertainty really starts on the inside and and if, if i'm hearing you correctly and kind of manifests in oh well the economy is bad right now so maybe this might not be the best time for me to do this or covid got me all jammed up so that's why i, I, I didn't succeed at this thing like it ain't necessarily those yeah. external factors you know what i mean it was it was what was happening i mean now don't get me wrong like if the stock market crashes and you lose all your money you right. know things right. might things might go left however i think by and large if the inside ain't right you know what lauren say how you gonna win if you ain't right with then a bar that's a listen, whole bar right listen. there she said it we we should have been listening we hear you miss lauren we hear you that was first that was on the first real album come on now <laughs> you know what you. one of the things to what you're saying is you know part of it is this idea people have to understand that either you trust that everything's going to be okay, mm -hmm. that you trust that you can figure it out, that everything's figure outable. We're all having different experiences. And this is what threw me off and, and, and it helped me to get a light bulb moment. It was that in this space and in this place with whatever, maybe it may be inflation. It may be, for me, it was during COVID-19 mm -hmm. where I really realized that different people were having totally different experiences with the same circumstances. You know, a lot of times we say, and, and of course, some people had different starts and they, they were already at a certain place, maybe before COVID-19, whether it was with business or their mental health or whatever. Right. But I saw people that actually were down in the game. Like it was it was halftime and they did not look like they were winning. But through COVID-19, they actually came back. They did some things that helped their outcomes be different. And so at any time in our lives, we have to realize that someone else is experiencing something similar to us. That's maybe right. Not identical but they're having exact different or more positive outcomes. And it's the lens that we're looking at things. Mm -hmm. I think with that insecurity piece, with that uncertainty piece, there we there's a lot that's uncertain for all of us, but that's what right. lens am I gonna choose to look through in order to help me get to the next step? What truth am I gonna adopt to, mm. that is gonna serve me rather than a truth really a lie, right, that I'm going to adopt that's not going to serve me. And so not to get too woo-woo, but it all starts here. You're absolutely right. right. Yeah. It's the perspective. Like, what perspective are you choosing today? Are you going to choose to to believe that you can't do something because, you know, the, the, the we are in a bear market right now or, right. you know, whatever the case may be? Or are you going to choose to believe that that you are worthy and valuable and, 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 and things like that? <laughs> Love our new Alexa. It's a Buick. Yeah, Alexa. Buick. Alexa. It's a Buick. It's an Alexa. It's a Buick. It's an Alexa. Coach, that's a Buick. That's an Alexa. The Buick Enclave with available Alexa built in. Verizon just gave us all a brand new iPhone 13. We've been customers for years. I thought new phones were for new customers. We got iPhone 13s too, switched to Verizon two minutes ago. Ours were busted and we still got a shiny new one. Check it out. So wait, everybody gets the same great deal. I think that's the point. iPhone 13 on us for every customer, current, new, everyone on any unlimited plan, starting at just $35, all on the network more people rely on. Don't you think it's time to get wealthy? I'm Deborah Owens, America's Wealth Coach, and my new show on the Black Star Network focuses on the things your financial advisor or bank isn't telling you. So watch Get Wealthy on the Black Star Network. How about sushi? I just had sushi for lunch yesterday. Yeah. How about tacos? Automatic emergency braking. One of six advanced safety features standard on every 2022 Chevy Equinox. Find new technology. Find new roads. Chevrolet.
you know, it's funny you mentioned the the lie we tell ourselves uh, because that leads me to my next question. You are a hella dynamic speaker and you talk a lot uh, in your talks about the idea of perfection. Tell tell us what that right. is, what how that manifested in your life and, and what you did to work through that. Yes. So I always tell the story that I was born in this single parent household, you know, got some Caribbean and Jamaican in my family. You know, we everything can be fixed with the Lord and school, like education and the Lord. That's all you need in life. You know, that's all you um, need. That's all you need. And you'll be fine. You know, so I was raised to kind of achieve. Uh, be a straight A student. I was on the track. I was in the orchestra. I was, I mean, I did that student government president, like watch out now. This is before 18. Mm -hmm. And I did all of these things. I went and got a degree in psychology and a master's in organizational development and a degree, a PhD in educational leadership before the age of 30 and still felt empty. Wow. And I thought I played by the rules and I don't know who made these rules up, but while everyone else thinks I'm successful, I really feel empty. I really have low self-esteem. I really mm. am struggling with imposter syndrome. And so I had to say, what is it? Because I've done all that you can do. Right. And, and, and I got the receipts. And got the receipts, baby. And it's, I'm the real deal. But inside, it just wasn't fulfill, fulfilling me at all. And I actually felt more empty than I ever felt. And I realized, and I had to have kind of a... a a come to Jesus moment with myself. Have you ever just, mm -hmm. you know, had to talk to yourself? That's okay. right. I e curse myself out. <laughs> and I realized that I was fake. I actually loved the idea that my friends would introduce me as, oh, this is my friend Brandy. She's getting her PhD. I love that. that. That started to become part of my identity. I right. love the fact that everyone called me for advice. I was a resource and I was the go-to, even despite the fact that when I needed a resource to go to, I couldn't find anybody in my phone book that I trusted with my deepest, darkest secret. Right. I had to realize that I created a life for myself where because I was so insecure, I'm the insecure high achiever, which is such an oxymoron. Mm -hmm. but be, I created a life for myself where everything around me built my identity up and built, you know, tried to fill my bucket of insecurity, which had a hole at the bottom. And so I had to take responsibility for the fact that I was fake. I was phony. I kept people around me that probably wouldn't like me if I was the real Brandy. I kept people around me that I really didn't like, but because they fulfilled something for me. And so I call it perfection. Right. And I tell people, you know, with my degree in psychology, I can make up and coin stuff. That's like right. Ali, and I'm going to do it. Okay. <laughs> and it's this thing that we do, particularly women, I think more so than men, where we pretend like things are perfect on the outside, but we're really faking it. And we mm -hmm. all do it for each other. And so what I realized was I'm actually going to be courageous enough to be my real self. And when I did that, I actually was rejected by the fake people that I had around me that really didn't like the new me. I actually lost relationships. I actually went through a divorce. I actually decided to be okay that in this life, the one life that I have, I'm with the uncertainty, with right. what I don't know that's going to happen tomorrow. One thing I do know is I'm going to be real. And I'm going to not be so thin skinned and so fragile about people who it's their their right not to, you know, I may not be their cup of tea. That's OK for me. Um, and, and it started with family. It right. started. With, I mean, and it's tough. It's don't tough. it always start there, though? Don't, look, look, don't it always. Um, listen, start. sometimes some hard decisions okay. got to be made and some hard conversations yeah. have to be made with people that are the closest to you, you know, yeah. about about how things are going to work and, and the boundaries that need to get set and, and, and all of that. And they expect us to show up in a certain way. And mm -hmm. so I said, rather than me, because here's the thing, I was a different person around different people. Oh, when I'm around certain family members, I reverted back to little old brand, little old brand. Then when I'm in, in certain groups and I'm Dr. Brandy Baldwin, and then when I'm in another group, I'm, and I was like, look, and that's not sustainable. It'll drive you crazy. You got split personalities and that right. just contributes to the uncertainty because you don't really know who you are um, and you have to be all these different things to all these different people. How can you ever be sure that you actually have what it takes to, to achieve that vision or to do whatever it is you set out to do? Yeah. And it's during the quiet times. I, I was so 
all over the place with expectations and trying to keep up with everything that mm-hmm. I only was happy by myself. I was like, I just want to be by myself. I don't really want to be around people. I, I was mean, like, I'm not mad at that to be lo- right. Low key. Not, 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 not I still love some quiet time, some me time. Right. But I think that, you know, for anyone that's struggling right now with getting back on track, trying to find their footing post COVID. we got the great resignation going on. We have a lot of people are making some life changing decisions. Absolutely. Make sure you're making the life changing decisions for the betterment of your future. You know, I had this moment where I thought, um, not to be morbid, but I just, I pictured myself at the funeral and I said, yo, all these fake people going to show up to my funeral and fake act like they were supportive and fake pretend like, you know, right. I'm so great, but I know the true story of how. And they, they wouldn't even me. be able to t- tell a true story about who you were because they right. don't even know. Right. It's like everyone's giving false accounts of the false life that I live. How mm-hmm. whack is that? And, and it was, it was me saying, okay. I don't necessarily have a model for this, for what this looks like, but I'm going to going to do it myself. And this is this is a game changer, though, Steph. And you know this because we talked about just coming into our own. And as we grow into our just um, the greatness of who we are and what we were called to do. But it's amazing how opportunities come to you. It's amazing how better friendships, better relationships come your way. It's like everything just moves out of the way and respond to your choosing and honoring yourself. You know, I tell people I used to absolutely do small things that didn't that dishonored who I was, like sit all day at the computer and do work and not get up to use the bathroom and just relieve myself. Like not just get up to just mm. eat a snack. But then mm. I'm wondering why people disrespect me. I'm wondering why I'm frustrated with certain relationships. Well, you don't even honor yourself in the small ways. That part. And so how was anyone else going to honor you? I could talk all day, you know, but you know, Girl, I'm just saying. <laughs> that, I mean, again, just a, a whole word. And, and, and it just, it just speaks again to the fact that, you know, we are all going to have those moments when we feel uncertain, when we feel, you know, unworthy, where, where we don't know what's going to happen next. But, but a lot of that, a lot of alleviating that starts with the internal work and, and not looking at you know, waiting for outside conditions to change or get better or be perfect or, you know, whatever, like, like the outside environment doesn't need to have as heavy an influence on how you move as people tend to give it. Yeah. At the end of the day, when you change the environment around you changes. Amen. Change your energy. You change all the energy around you. Yeah. Yes. That's physics. That's that's exactly. That's like literally science it's you it's a mm-hmm. universal principle and law that we can't break it's as strong as gravity it's like wow when you and when you put on a different lens i have like 15 different pairs of glasses right it th- i think of life like what lens am i choosing to put on and look through how am i willing to look at this situation as an opportunity even if it doesn't feel right and the other thing is talking about feelings real quick we cannot live our life and make decisions and choices based on emotions Mm. I, I have, it's okay to be emotional. Now right. I'd be curled up in a fetal position once a month in my closet, booing and crying, <laughs> Lord, right. Oh right. But, and that's just the purge. But then you, you, but then you blow your nose and wash your face and Correct. get back to business with some, with some things that make sense. Right. With That makes sense. Like I'm a pros and cons list. I have my wise counsel. I'm going to need to call Stephanie and say, Hey Steph, I'm thinking about da, 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 da. You know, that's when you have to be about your business and, yes. and lo- your life is a business. You know, Treat yourself and, and everything around you as serious as you would your business or your career. But we we do certain things for our employer and for our nine to five or for our business that we don't even do for ourselves. We have accountability Ooh. and quality assurance and protocol and processes again. for our workflow, but you don't have that for your life flow. And so it's one of those things where you are you your success, your freedom, your accomplishments is not only about you. When you do that thing, you're opening doors for family members, for friends, for your children, for others. So I got to be good. I have to be That's healthy. Right. I, my mental health has to be straight. And once I realized and kind of put myself on a pedestal, you know, I saw a meme and it really summed up my life before I made this kind of decision and this shift and this pivot. And it said, we have to stop teaching our women to measure their strength based on how much toxicity and turmoil they can endure how much they can endure absolutely amen yeah wow 
Why? And we do that all the time. We do that. You know, I, well, I'm a strong woman. woman. Yeah. I'm a strong black woman. I, I've been through it. I'm a ride or die. Right. You know, I don't want to die. I don't want right. to ride or die. The ride, I, right. I why, the ride have to include death why, can I, why can't I be a thrive and fly? You know yeah. what I mean? Instead of a ride or die. We're going to be a thrive and fly. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hold on, Patty LaBelle. Hold on. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. You don't have to yeah. always be suffering to and sacrificing to your strength to measure your strength and to prove your worthiness to other people. Um, I, I, I just, I love that so much. And, and once you get clear on identity and get clear on how you can best take care of yourself, you find and, and get clear on the plan, you know, you find that a lot of that uncertainty actually goes away. You know, yeah. it's, it's funny how that works, right? It melts away. It melts mm -hmm. away because you're not looking for, things to be certain without, because you're certain within, Amen. you know, you know that it doesn't matter what happens. You're going to be consistent. You're going to, I have just a set of values and things that I do that it doesn't matter what the outside is. I know I'm not going to be flaky, but see, sometimes people know that they're flaky. They know that they're inconsistent. They know that they actually don't do certain things or haven't taken the time to develop certain habits and skills. And so right. they're nervous. So they need the outside environment to be perfect. For, for the lack of preparation that they've done for their mm. life. And so we have to, we have to figure that out and address that, you know, with my kids, um, it, when they're small, I have to create an environment when they were very small, that's conducive for them to be able to, to thrive and do things a certain way. I had to put the covers over the outlets. I had to put the thing on the steps so they wouldn't fall down the steps. The After girl, a yeah. while, we're going to take those guardrails off. And I can't guarantee that when they go to a family member's house that they're going to have certain guardrails or an environment that I have in my home. I can't guarantee when they go to school and when they go to this event, I can't guarantee that. But what I do guarantee is my kids know when to say no. They know mm -hmm. how to remove themselves from bad situations. They know how to call for help. They, they know certain things within them that regardless of what the environment is, it's going to help them right. to survive and thrive. That's and right. if people can do that for themselves, then they'll find that that uncertainty melts away. Absolutely. Uh, you get a level of certainty and peace that no outside external force can take away. That That's just that's so amazing. Dr. Brandy, where can people go to find out more information about you? Absolutely. So you can find out what I'm up to at drbrandy.com. It's all spelled out. drbrandy.com podcast, speaking engagements, everything. That's the main hub. And looking forward to connecting with folks that are uh, listening to The Pivot. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. I love it. I love these interviews. I mean, y'all have all just been dropping gems and nuggets. And I am so, so grateful for you uh, for being with me today here on The Pivot. Thank you, Dr. Brandy. Thank you. It is a scary world out there, y'all. There are a lot of things that we don't know. There are a lot of things to be uncertain about. And it's especially scary when you're trying to make a major transition or pivot in your life. I get it. I understand it. But the thing is, once you're a little more certain about who you are and a little more certain about why you want to pivot, it makes the uncertainty a little less. So that's what you want to do first. You want to know who you are, get grounded in your identity, number one. And number two, get very, very clear on your why. Why are you doing this? Why do you want to make this transition? Why do you even want to pivot? Why do you want to start that business or go back to school or change careers? Get very, very clear on your why because when you have that internal certainty, a lot of that external certainty, uncertainty starts to go away. Also, start thinking about a plan. You don't have to have it all together just yet. And we're going to talk about plan in a future episode, but just start thinking about a plan to get prepared. Start writing some stuff down. Start, you know, looking at it every day and just letting that sort of sink in and internalize inside you. That'll help with a little bit of that uncertainty as well. Sometimes y'all, you just don't have to do it scared. You're going to have to do it even when you don't know what's coming next even when you don't know what's just around that corner, even when you don't know if it's gonna work out. Sometimes you just have to do it anyway and step out there on faith 
as they say. But also a quick tech tip, when you're feeling especially uncertain and anxious, log off for a little while, put that phone down for a little while. We tend to do what we call doom scrolling, where we sort of go down that social media rabbit hole and that's just a good place where all the bad news gets aggregated together at the same time. So when you're feeling especially uncertain, when you're feeling especially anxious, take a little bit of a digital break and just put the phone down for a little while. This is Stephanie Humphrey and you're watching The Pivot.